like like the bacteria that I had in my eye, like I almost lost my my whole vision in my eye. If I would have waited like another day or two, they told me that my eye would have been gone and I would have lost vision. So that was another thing. Like I was in the hospital, like shit, like I don't know if I'm gonna ever fight again. I want to I want to get started with uh, the Step Brothers poster that you guys put out. Did, who made that? Did you guys make that? <laughs> no, the UFC actually made that. Oh, um, really? They kind of, yeah, they pulled us aside um, when he was doing his media and stuff like that on photos, and they were like, "We thought it'd be funny to kind of do this picture," and we were like, "All right." And uh, we I actually thought it was just gonna be like um, like me and my shirt and him and his shirt, but the, here they photoshopped it. It took like two hours or three hours, and then we met the guy. Um, when did we meet him? At Wayans, he came up to us and was like, yeah, I'm the kid that made that. I was like, damn, that was pretty sweet. Yeah, I was thinking, like, you guys could take that. And I was like, man, these guys should t- do a podcast or a show or something. Something. Called, like, Not that. Step Brothers. But use that yeah, poster yeah, yeah. as, like, the artwork for the for the show. Have you guys thought of that? You know, maybe going and doing a podcast, you and your brother. I think you guys have a unique perspective because you're both fighting in the UFC. You know what I mean? That's something that I feel like other brothers have not capitalized on in the past. Yeah, I feel like um, kind of it's weird because all the guys that we know now, they all have podcasts and they're all like all the kids we went to high school with. They all have podcasts and stuff. Um, but I feel I, I always told my brother that if we were going to have a podcast, it would be like a uh, fight companion. So we would just kind of like hang out and talk about the fights um, and watch the fights. So I said, like, I feel like that's something that, that like, I don't know, we could we could kind of take and kind of go with. But we have to get like the cameras and the setup and all that stuff. So. Yeah, that's the hard part. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, getting started is always the hardest part. Exactly, man. It is. It is. It's. It's. It's a lot harder than people think, man. It's not just like you yeah. go to a store and you're like, all right, let me get the podcast set. It's. It doesn't work. No, that way. definitely not. No, no, I could see the nice mic you got there. Like, no, nah, like, I can't. I don't know which one to pick. And I, I started like, like trying to stream, like playing video games and stuff like that. And I got people throwing different cameras at me that I should get. And I'm like, all right, well, let me just take a step back from this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, man, you're, you're busy doing other things. Um, let's yeah. talk about the upcoming fight, man, February 19th. Uh, you return after multiple cancellations. You know, what does that do to a fighter when everything is scheduled and calculated and, and timing is so key where they're canceling things back to back? Um, I guess like a lot of fighters would get frustrated from it. Um, but me personally, I'm, I'm kind of the person that kind of like takes it in, kind of deals with it. Um, but I don't kind of dwell on it. Uh, it's obviously happening for a reason. I don't know what reason it's happening for. You know, it depends on who, the type of person that you are, depending on like if you think that things happen for a reason or not. You know, maybe it maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Maybe it's just kind of things that are happening in the world right now. Um, but I'm kind of just using it as if it were something that is happening for a reason that it's obviously for some for the better, right? I need to take a little bit, a little bit of time off. Um, something's telling my body to kind of improve and get better. Like always take the time to get better and not just always jump in the fights. So for my, for my like actual like perspective of it, I've just taken it as giving me more time to get better and giving me something to improve on, you know, kind of taking an outside look uh, at my whole game and um, kind of just seeing what I can improve on and, and what things I need to work on to just kind of make me better to kind of elevate me to that next step and uh, getting a number next to my name. For sure, for sure. And when when they canceled the last fight against Roman, what did you do? Did you decide to just like, okay, I'm going to take a step back? You said you mentioned learning and improving. What did, Was there a focus on any particular aspect of your game? Um, For me personally, I kind of just, uh, based off of like my coaches and stuff like that, I thought my, my coach, I thought to my brother a little bit, um, just kind of like seeing like things that we can work on, you know, because we, fighters, we can always get better. Um, but for me personally, I really just kind of focused on just taking everything in and, and from, from like a fighter perspective, I guess just like trying to take my time inside the cage when I'm in there and just kind of, uh, trying to being in the moment that way I can perform because like now, na- uh, like the fights that I've had prior, I've always, they've always kind of been a blur and my coach is always talking to me afterwards. And I'm like, I don't remember doing this. I don't remember doing that. But like for my last fight for the Holland fight that actually, I actually like fought for like um, two minutes or something like that. Um, I was in there solely focused and I could I could replay the whole fight in my head. I can I can tell you exactly what happened here, there, and there, and and I think that kind of like helped a little bit. And that's kind of what I'm just like focusing on, just being in the present moment in the cage, focusing on the task at hand, and just performing the way that I do in the gym. 
I think that's kind of my my biggest thing that I've always needed to to, to kind of focus on was just being the same person in the gym as if I am in the cage. Um, I've always been somebody that kind of built that up, but I've also kind of taken it taken it like taking a step backwards in not putting too much pressure on, um, not putting like, too much pressure on the moment. Like just cause I'm in the cage fighting a guy doesn't mean it's any different from me fighting or sparring in, in training. It's just, we have small gloves on. Um, I can get cut, I can get knocked out, I can get choked out, but you know, it's kind of, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just a different, different environment. The apex is probably the best place to, to do it. Right. <laughs> cause it's so yeah, silent right. and like, it's basically yeah. like a gym you're, you're performing in yeah. the gym. Yes. And I, I never, really, well, I never really thought about that, but yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So that's, that's a different perspective. So you just gave me a different perspective on, on how to think about it. So, yeah, for sure. And in your last fight, man, we talked about it cause we, we actually did an interview ahead of the Roman fight, but yeah. I, I thought like you're much more aggressive. You know, I watched that fight again after we did the interview and I was like, man, this guy's aggression is, a, is it went to another level in that fight. Did you feel yeah. that way after looking back yes. at it? Yeah, I had to be, that was the game plan. The game plan was to get in there and get into his face uh, uh, as soon as possible and just make him fight. I have to make these guys fight my fight and not really uh, focus on what they're doing in the cage. I have to make them focus on me. So from now on, this, that's how I'm going to be. I'm going to go in there and try to be aggressive, but be um, controlled. Like I'm going to control my strikes and everything like that. I'm not going to go in there and just start swinging punches. Uh, everything's going to be, you know, uh, set on different things that I have to do in the cage. And, and But I'm going to make sure I have an aggression behind it. I'm not just going to be in there and just like throw jabs and just kind of making sure I'm sticking in movement. I'm going to be doing these things for a reason and just making sure that I I'm aggressive the whole time. Did you see uh Kevin Holland's video that he put up where he was, he brought in some guy that was talking shit to him. Yeah. In the DMs yeah. And just uh, yeah. Molly him. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's, I mean, this guy's on this guy's it's, it's not something I would do. I don't think it's something that you should do. Like these guys are, are I don't know. I mean, might have been staged, might have not been staged, but it's kind of stupid in my opinion. Like, what's the, what's the, what do you get out of that? He gets views on Instagram, and he gets, you know, people just talking about him. And I think that's that's kind of all he wants is wants people talking about him and and getting views as opposed to winning. It could be dangerous too because the guy that's coming in, you don't know what kind of person that is, right? Exactly. You yeah, do you, have I no can't idea. Just, you can't just pay for somebody's bus ticket to come out and train at the gym like that guy can be dangerous like i could come into the gym like with 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 something not saying that people do but people come in there could come in there with like a different mindset too you know he could have tried to you know lay a beat down on him or something like that but you never know man people are weird yeah yeah man the gym is gym man the street is the street yeah. there's two totally yes. different levels to to the world yeah. of uh you know just to the world and and yeah like i've heard stories i remember one girl she had a guy stalking her for like months in the gym she didn't even know Ooh, just coming in and training yeah. they kicked him out he came back dyed his hair wild we've stuff a, dude we've had a lot of wild guys in our gym one guy came in and trained with my coach and my coach was like yeah dude like anything goes and the two tried to grab my coach and tried to like choke him like with his hands <laughs> and my my coach like just like thought it was hilarious arm barred him and then after that like a week later we saw this dude on the news because he drove his wife's car into the river what? by that by our houses. Yeah, like the kid, the guy was a psycho, and he was in the gym, you know, a week or two before that training with us. So it's it's people are crazy, man. Yeah, people are absolutely nuts. Not crazy. Well, you're you're facing a guy that's not too crazy, right? Crazy enough to step in no, against right. you, right? Julian yeah. Marquez, three and one in the UFC. Yeah. His only loss is split decision. Pretty pretty close fight. All his wins by chokes. What do you? How do you assess his jujitsu? Because I know you're a jujitsu guy. Uh, I mean. He's kind of he's kind of a guy that has basic jujitsu, but it, it works. Um, the way he gets up from the bottom, you know, he does leave a lot of positions that you can jump on. But I think in his mind, when he's going for those positions, he knows that he's two or three steps ahead of 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 the opponent. That's what you need to be. So he knows that if he's going to give his back up, he's going to put a hook in. So he's going to have to turn and, and, and try to you know get like an underhook and come up on a single leg. Um, I do think that I have the superior grappling in the, in the exchanges. Um, and I just have to, I have to take full advantage of that. Um, he's a game, really, really game opponent. You know, he's, he's in under fight, you know, we've seen him take a beating for two rounds and, and still come back and win. Um, but I think what's helped kind of give me good views on him is that his la his three fights. I mean, what, no, is he, what is he? Wait a minute. He fought, um, yeah, he's three and one. Um, 
the one guy that he did beat who was Stewart, Darren Stewart. I don't think he was Southpaw, but every other fighter that he was was Southpaw. So I have good views on 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 what he's going to throw and 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 how he's improved against Southpaws as opposed to you know him not really being comfortable fighting Southpaws. So he's going to come in there very comfortable fighting me because I'm a Southpaw, but uh, I'm expecting a lot from him and I, and and. It's just good that I got the views from his last fights that that he was fighting Southpaw, so I can get a good, couple good reads on him now. Being a Southpaw, you know, people always talk about, you know, especially Orthodox fighters, they always talk about, man, Southpaw, man, I hope I don't fight a Southpaw. And you being a Southpaw yourself, have you ever stepped into the cage and from the get-go you knew the guy had no idea how to deal with a Southpaw and you were just like, this is going to be easy. This is going to be, you know, a... a uh, one of those like remembering type of performances. Yeah, actually, two of my amateur kickboxing fights that I had, that's how it was. Um, my performances were fantastic that I had. Uh, and I fought two orthodox guys that had no idea how to fight a southpaw for some reason. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, I'm so comfortable fighting orthodox fighters that guys that fight southpaw against me, I'm going to probably going to be like completely lost. So for the, for when the time comes that I fight a southpaw, I'm going to have to eventually fight southpaws in the gym. But I don't really have a lot of topples in the gym right now, so I look forward to that challenge ahead. But yeah, I love fighting with the Docs fighters too. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know, piggybacking off that, what do you think of his his striking? You know, his his other parts of his skill set. He's good. He's just very aggressive. I think. I think that he doesn't. Um, he tries to do a little bit too much in his striking. He tries. He, he does do a lot of good feints, and he has a lot of good uh, uh, feints and stuff like that. But his footwork, you know, everybody's footwork could use a little bit of work. Um, but being in that small cage. I know I can't get my back to the cage immediately. I have to go in there and take the center and make him move backwards. Um, we've also shown that he's well. He's also shown that he's very not not very good going backwards. Um, if you pressure him right from the very beginning, um, he'll kind of give you the 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 lead of the dance. I would say. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna go in there and just be aggressive that I, as as aggressive as I can be. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier about him kind of taking a beating before actually winning the fight later in the later in the fight you know later in the rounds i mean you can only do that so many times right until that stuff starts catching up with you right yeah uh yeah i mean i from from my standpoint of watching his fights the all the fighters that he's fought have rocked him and just no guys really capitalized um so that's kind of a good thing for me, right? If I if I land a good shot on them, I could I could rock them and take advantage of them. Um, a lot of these guys didn't take advantage, but I know that if I do rock them or, or when I do, that I I will take full advantage of it and get right into his face and 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 get him out of there as quickly as I can. When you enter a new year, do you start it refreshed or do you let what happened in the previous year carry over and drive you? Uh, no, I kind of just look back on uh, just how the year went as a whole. Um, you know, I fought twice. Uh, I've had a lot of cancellations. You know, 2020 and 2021 were kind of shitty years, uh, not only for the world, but, you know, for, for myself as well, for, like, my whole kind of MMA career. Um, I've kind of left that in the past, though. I just kind of leave it. I don't really dwell on it. I'm not going to dwell on anything that, that I can't control. Um, I can only control what, like, today and, and right now at this very moment. So uh, that's all I do is I just move into the new year as if it were another day. I don't make it a big deal that it needs to be. Um, what's happened in the past has happened, and, and I just have to move on and move forward and just just be me. Philadelphia, how is it? How is it over there? You're training. You have you have a uh, you know your camp and everything going on, but can you just go freely everywhere? You know, like what is it like right now in Philadelphia? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty open. It, it's open. Um, they just they on the third they just did a vaccine mandate for like uh, restaurants and stuff like that. So there are restaurants that are asking for vaccines, and there are, there are restaurants that aren't. Um. But other than that, you pretty much just have to wear. They have people wearing masks in the in the in the grocery stores and stuff like that. But nothing too wild or too strict right now. Um, and hopefully, it's just everything just starts to open up more and the masks go away and and the vaccine mandates go away too. But as of right now, it's just vaccine mandates and, and making sure you wear masks. Nothing too wild. During camp, you're not really doing much eating in restaurants, right? It's a lot <clears throat> of home prep meals or ready meals, you know, stuff like that, right? Yeah, I have a good sponsor, Performance Meal Prep, who who drop food off every Sunday for me. So so I have them kind of just delivering my meals for right now, and uh, they're all safe with everything that's going on. Um, I'm also not too paranoid about the stuff that's 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 going on either. I can't let that all all get to me either. Um, yeah. I do go out and, and go to the stores and stuff like that. You know, it's not a big deal to me. 
Uh, I know a lot of these people are, are crazy paranoid and stuff like that, but I know that I can't be. <laughs> There's no need for me to be because I'm training with the guys every single day without masks on it. And we're training. I have guys that are vaccine. You know, I have guys like me that, that we're not, we're not vaccinated or anything like that. So mm. we're just training and doing and being ourselves and, and everything's great. So that's good. Um, so how do you see yourself, you know, getting this win against Marquez? Um, I see it being a very back and forth fight, but I see myself being very dominant. Um, I believe that going into the very first round that, that I'll be probably as aggressive as, as I've ever been in the cage. Um, there's just something different about this fight that I'm feeling that like, man, when I get into the gym and I'm on training, I'm, I'm, I'm aggressive. Like my brother's even telling me like, I need to settle down a little bit. Like I'm getting a little too aggressive with my partners. Um, but something just feels different. And, and I'm, I'm just excited about getting in there and, and getting to put my hands on them. Do you feel like the, a win over Marquez will, leapfrog you know further up because the record that he has the way he's been finishing guys i think that he's in the position to leapfrog if he beats you you know you guys are kind of in that in between like gray area do you feel like the win will put you forward and, and get a bigger name yeah i said I, I think i said this before that i think that we're the top guys that aren't ranked <clears throat> like past 15 i think we're within the next 10 guys that aren't ranked uh outside of the top 15 um and i believe that you know, whoever wins this fight, the next guy will, well, I'm going to, I believe I'm going to win, but I believe the next guy will have a number next to his name. If not, then I'm not sure. But like, I did see the rankings. I forget when it was. And Chris Weidman's number 15 and, and Holland's number 14. So like, that doesn't make sense either to me. Um, but they need to get new guys in there. And I think, I think whoever wins this fight will move on to, to getting the number next to their name and, and just cracking that top 15. Yeah. It seems like, there's Whitaker and, and Adesanya, and then the other guys are kind of just battling in a carousel, right? Yeah. You got Sean Strickland coming back, coming up right now, you know what I mean? But yeah. there's, like you said, there's other guys that are going to need to be clawing up, hitting that 15, 14 mark, and then fighting the dudes that are just trying to hold on to their ten top 10 spot. You know how it is in the rank, because everybody's trying to hold on to the top spot, yeah. man. That's right. I mean, it's it's these guys... They don't want to fight anybody that's that's lower than them or yeah or higher than them I guess I guess you should say. Um, but <clears throat> it's tough when everybody's filled up. You know, it's tough to just wait there when everybody's got a fight coming up. Like I'm a guy that you know I say this now that I'll, I could I will fight anybody that they put in front of me. But who's to say that when I hit number ten that I'm like nah I'm not gonna fight anybody that's behind me. Like. But, you know, I'm more than willing to fight anybody, just as long as I keep winning. You know, I know that these guys just need to keep winning. And uh, I don't think they want to – they don't want to put the number at risk. And that doesn't get you the belt. So these guys have to put the numbers at risk, and, and eventually they get rewarded for it. Oh, exactly right, man. Like, even yeah. if you do have a number next to your name, if you fight who they give you, they'll offer something really, really yeah. big they'll give eventually. you something better. Yeah. yeah. As long yeah. as you're as long as you're cool and you're not difficult with matchmaking mm -hmm. and stuff like that, I think I think as long as you're on the good side of McMaynard, Sean Shelby and Dana that that you'll get whatever they uh, you'll get whatever you ask for. I think Sean Strickland's a perfect example <clears throat> of that, man. He's kind of doing that right now where he's just fighting whoever yeah. they give him and he's winning and now he's in a main event. So it shows yeah, you that you know you can't you don't have to pick and choose. Yeah, he doesn't complain. He's a guy who comes to fight and uh He's also a psychopath too, so I mean, I think I think that helps as well. So he's he's going to sign on the line, whoever whoever they offer him, and I think that that kind of puts him in 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 their on their good side. All right, um, a couple more outside of uh, the fight. MMA fans, man, they are the best. They are the worst. They are the craziest. You know, what do yeah. you think MMA fans or just fans in general obsess obsess about too much that fighters don't care about? Fighter pay probably might be my first. I mean, this whole this whole thing has come out, and it's just it's just ridiculous. I don't know; these people are like, I don't know. I mean, I have I, I can I can say what I want to say, and and all this stuff, and people can say what they want to say, but nothing's going to ever change. And I don't think you know. And guys say like like that's the reason why because you who are a fighter who will fight for whatever you're paying, getting paid now, you know that's why you guys won't get paid more because you got guys that'll do that. And I was like, yeah, but like like the whole thing with Inganu with him getting 600 K or whatever, there's plenty of other, I, I wrote this on Twitter. You know, one guy said that I was like a guy like me that, that said that other guys would fight Like you know, Francis might not fight for 600 K, but there's a whole UFC roster that will. And people were like, people were like, Oh, you're what's wrong with the sport. 
you're this type of fighter is what's wrong. This is why guys never unionize or whatnot, but it, it is what it is. I think fighter pay is, is the first thing that they kind of obsess about too much. Um, Smack talk is another one. You don't need to trash talk, I don't think. I mean, I'm not a guy that's going to trash talk or anything like that. Um, what else? I don't know. I guess those are my top two. Those are the top two, right? Usually yeah, those yeah, are yeah. some of the, the big ones, right? Um, yeah. PTSD and combat sports. Not CTE, PTSD, mm-hmm. right? From like injuries, weight cuts, yeah. losses, maybe even some damage that you've taken in a fight. Have you gone through this and overcome it or seen it in other fighters? I mean, yeah. I mean, you lose a fight and, and you get – yeah, I've gone through it. I went through my through – my, I'm not going to be honest. I went through it through my first my first loss to, to, to Allen in my, in my career. You know, I came home and I, I was fine. And I was like, all right, cool. And then, like, shit just builds up in your mind that, like, you don't think you're good enough. You're not really sure what's going on, like – why did you lose? Why is this? Why is that? And then you start making excuses up in your head. Like, Oh, it was a short notice fight. You technically, technically in some people's eyes, you could have won it, but like you didn't. And then he goes and loses his next fight. And you're like, shit, like, am I good enough to beat this guy that he just lost to? Like, I'm not sure. Like all this shit builds up in your head, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm fine. I think part of it is talking about it and letting, letting people know, like if I ever feel down or everything like that, I tell my fiance, I'm like, yo, like, I'm not feeling really up to it today. Like I need to talk to you for a little bit and we, we talk and that's what it is. And then she always helps me up. Um, I've also seen it with my brother, you know, people that lose and, and stuff like that. Um, you just have to build back stronger and just, just kind of look at it as like a learning lesson. And like physically, uh, this is, this is completely different. Um, with my eye, like my eye got jacked up after my Phil Hall's fight. I got a bad staff infection in my eyelid and I had to like get, um, like, a, a skin graft from my neck put on my eyelid and it had to reheal. And when I was in the hospital for a week, pretty much, I almost lost my eye. Like, like the bacteria that I had in my eye, like I almost lost my, my whole vision in my eye. If I would have waited like another day or two, they told me that my eye would have been gone and I would have lost vision. So that was another thing. Like I was in the hospital, like, shit like i'm not going to ever fight again like what am i going to do with my life if i if if this ha- if it turns out that I, all of a sudden i can't fight again what am i going to do with my life like i had no idea i was like complete panic i was depressed i was upset you know but again you have to have the people around you to help you right so my fiance was with me in the hospital every single day she'd bring me food my family was with me every single day checking up on me and i think that the people around you will help you deal with those issues that you have as long as you're open to talk about them well, I didn't even know about the eye, man. Have you ever talked yeah, about that before? Hey, no, no, I, I really, um, I've talked about it like here and there, but nobody's, I've never like people have asked like, yo, like why is like your one eye blink a lot and your other eye doesn't blink that much. And like, I have some raunchy pictures in my phone that I have, I, I will never bring out, but like I kept it in the down low. I made sure nobody knew that I was in the hospital. Like my face was like, my face had to be like two to three times the size of it as it was right now. Yeah, I had I received a cut in the Halls fight, and then uh, when I flew home, I was like sick. Like I felt like I felt like I had like the flu. I was like in shivers and stuff like that. And I waited until Wednesday it was to go to the hospital, and and I was real like I thought like my eye was just like bruising up. But here, the type of bacteria that I had my I had a staph infection and I had strep, so the strep was actually eating my skin away, and it was eating my skin like forward towards my the outer eyelid as opposed to backwards. And they said that if I would have waited like two or three days, it could have just shifted positions and went backwards and ate my eye. And I pretty much would have lost my vision. But thankfully, I got it done. So if you ever have any any swollen swollen you know areas or anything like that, anything questionable, make sure you go to the hospital and get checked out. Because I've had multiple staph infections. I've had multiple uh, like just ringworm and stuff like that. But that was by far the worst I've ever had. I was in the hospital for a week. I had surgery. It was it was it was a long 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 like three months that i that i recovered from it and then i fought kevin holland after that so you're fine things happen you're fine yeah perfectly great right now you went in there and did great against kevin holland uh one last question man um kevin lee going from one kevin to the other kevin lee he's (laughs) he's you know signed with eagle fc now they're paying him in crypto what are your thoughts on cryptocurrency and would you ever entertain the you know the possibility of being paid your fight purse in crypto I mean, if I knew more about it, maybe. Um, but like at this very moment, I'm not really sure like what the whole Bitcoin and crypto thing kind of is. I have one company that does pay me in Bitcoin, and uh, 
I don't really know what it is. I mean, I just know like I, I just know I get paid like whatever I would be getting paid cash. That's what they pay me. My that's what they pay me, and then that transfers over to like Bitcoin or whatever. Uh, so hopefully in the long run it builds up. But as of right now, I've I'm very unknown as far as the whole crypto thing going on. But uh, if you were to tell me that you know if you gave me you know 50k now for a fight that in five years from now it could be worth you know 200k, then I'd be like, all right, well then. Sure. Pay me a Bitcoin. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But we don't know that, you know, so it's exactly it's, yeah. that's the thing. Like, it's gambling, right? So I don't yeah. know. Well, at least you have some something on the side, you know, that just in yeah. case, just, just in, in case. case. Yeah, just in case, just in case it's working out. But yeah, the whole crypto NFT thing, yeah. like people are, people are telling me I need to start NFTs. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know where to start. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. And and my brother just got the uh, that Panini, those Panini cards. Yeah. So that's pretty, that's awesome too. I mean, hopefully that's the, that's the next step for me. And uh, yeah, the whole NFT and digital world and metaverse and all that stuff, it's all its all over my head. I have no idea what the hell's going on. Well, you know what's going on is uh, February 19th, man. You're back in the cage, finally. Uh, thank right. you, Kyle, man. Always a good chat and uh, good luck on the fight and the rest of the camp, man. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it.